so you saw the title of this video, you know that it's going to be about WebAssembly. In the video, I'm going to talk about what WebAssembly is, why you might or might not want to use it, and some of my own personal notes about what it is like to make stuff using WebAssembly. If you want more of a tutorial type thing, I put up another video with this one. The link is in the description. Great, so that out of the way. The 10 second overview of what WebAssembly is. It's an assembly-like binary format of code that can be executed by web browsers. It can be generated from higher level languages like C++ and Rust. And the idea is that it runs a lot faster than JavaScript. Anywho, over the last couple months, I implemented a 3D skeletal animation system in both JavaScript and C++ compiled to WebAssembly to compare the two. At a high level, the logic is nearly identical, and I look to compare both how the development process goes and what the effect on the final product is. The code and build script I used on Ubuntu are available online on my GitHub page. I don't have the redistribution rights on the models I used, so the assets are not available. Sorry about that. The assets come from Mixamo. As of the making of this video, they were all free for download and use in your own stuff. It's an awesome service, and I totally recommend checking it out. But I want to respect their wishes and not redistribute their stuff. If any of you can make a character and a few animations that I can use, please let me know. I will be forever grateful to you. Uh, if you're taking requests, do Danny Avedan of the Game Grumps or Chris Pratt, because they are both amazing. Anywho, my overall analysis of WebAssembly as it is currently is it's very difficult to use from a technical standpoint. Before beginning to use WebAssembly, I recommend a solid familiarity with pointers and serializing data into a binary format. If you're using C++ like I did, you'll want to have your C++ fundamentals down well as well. Things like types, structs, and pointers. Many of the difficult problems I faced will be made easier as the technology and community evolve, but it's certainly not there yet. If your background is exclusively in JavaScript, you're going to have a hard time doing WebAssembly things. The first somewhat hard part was setting up WebAssembly to work. I used mscripten, though I did also try binary in by itself. It took the better part of an afternoon to get all the tools working, but once again, this is bleeding edge technology right now. So a lot of the pain will be resolved as the technology settles. Overall, it was a lot harder to get going with WebAssembly than it is with JavaScript by itself, but it is easier than say for PHP or Scala. So definitely manageable. The first real technical challenge is communicating information between the C++ and JavaScript code. The WebAssembly memory buffer used for the C++ stack and heap exists as a JavaScript array buffer, which you have access to from both the C++ and JavaScript code. A pointer in the C++ points to the position of the array of that WebAssembly memory buffer. Functions themselves can only use numbers, but that does give you the ability to pass pointers to functions, because pointers are just numbers. This allows you to use more involved types, which I absolutely did in this project, if you don't mind setting that memory manually yourself and saving off a pointer to it. I was using a handful of classes, illustrated as shown, in the animation system. I had TypeScript implementations of all the classes, as well as struct definitions in the C++. Writing the code to serialize the JavaScript objects onto the WebAssembly heap only took about 150 lines of TypeScript, complete with some error checking, so the translation isn't that complex if you're familiar with C++ data structures and the memory layout concepts. My demo was also sorta of nice in that all the data used was created at the beginning of the application and never really changed, so I didn't have to put too much effort into memory management. If I was constantly loading and unloading animations, I would have had a lot more work into the memory allocation scheme. Communicating back and forth wasn't that difficult after all the memory was serialized. To provide a JavaScript function for the C++ to use, you just add it to an imports object from the JavaScript. All your C++ functions are provided to the exports object, easily available from the JavaScript. So once I had all the animation structs built in the heap from the JavaScript code, I could just use a map to look up the addresses of a model or animation and pass that into the functions. Pretty easy by this point. By and large, the most difficult thing was the debugging. As WebAssembly currently stands, there are no source maps or anything like that, so debugging becomes glorified console log debugging. Writing JavaScript functions you can call from the C++ and inspect. But again, you can only use numbers. Those numbers can be pointers, but you still have to inspect and reason about that memory yourself. I got the hang of it eventually, and luckily I was only using floats for most of the stuff I was doing anyways, but it's definitely a very painful debugging process. I had bug after bug after bug after bug. And solving them took a few hours each to resolve, just because of the sheer awkwardness of the debugging process. Thankfully, easing those pains are on the sites of the browser vendors, so hopefully by the time you watch this video, my complaint is invalid. Until then, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend setting up unit tests and debugging your C++ code within a C++ environment. 
So I chose to make a 3D character animation demo to show off WebAssembly for a few reasons. First of all, animated graphics demos are an awesome visual way to show the impact of optimization. It's very difficult to tell if clicking a button works within 15 milliseconds versus 100 milliseconds, but it's very easy to see the difference between an animation running 60 frames per second and 10 frames per second. Having decided that a graphics demo would be cool, a naive implementation of skeletal animation is pretty CPU intensive, and WebAssembly is a CPU side optimization. Third, there's a lot of work that happens in one place, so JavaScript and WebAssembly don't have to talk to each other very much. And finally, I know from experience that writing skeletal animation systems that the bugs in them are, as a rule, hilarious. Though the performance gains were impressive. I mean, JavaScript engines are very good at making JavaScript run fast, so I was only expecting, like, I don't know, maybe a 20 to 30% speed improvement, twice as fast maybe, I guess. But I saw a pretty consistent 8 to 10 times speed boost by using the WebAssembly system. So here's the experiment that I ran. I put 15 animated characters, each using one of four possible animations at any one time on the screen. Times reported are from the beginning of finding animation data for the first character to the end of finding animation data for the last character. This does not include any rendering, GPU uploading, geometry processing, any of that time. There may be some error on the exact figures, but they are roughly correct. As you can see, most browsers saw around an 8 to 10 times improvement, with Chrome on Windows and Edge also on Windows seeing nearly 15 times. The Android Chrome sample is less accurate than the others because it's harder to have a controlled environment there, as well as it's harder to collect samples over a period of time. I was just using my own personal cell phone to collect those. Uh, also, you'll see Safari is not on there at this time. Safari does not support WebAssembly. And also, I didn't bother with checking Opera or um, like Firefox for mobile. I just wanted to get a rough sample. And, and again, remember these are rough results, and results for only one application. Don't go taking this as meaning that all WebAssembly is 10 times faster than all equivalent JavaScript. The bottom line here is that WebAssembly isn't just a few percent faster, it's many times faster. Also looking at the graph, something that you should keep aware is if you're trying to write a video game or some other sort of really smooth experience animated, uh, you have 16 milliseconds to render a single frame. So all of the JavaScript column is like laggy and slow, perceptibly so, and the WebAssembly all fits well within that budget, so I could have been doing plenty more. Concluding thoughts, at the end of the day, I'm much more hopeful about the potential of WebAssembly than I was starting this whole experiment. The performance wins are really nothing to scoff at, they're amazing. The technology is definitely more difficult to use than JavaScript or C++ on their own, but it's not so much more difficult that it should scare developers away. Also, don't just use it because fast equals better, the speed boost you get might not be worth the headache. I absolutely don't think that WebAssembly will replace JavaScript, but it does supplement it really well. I also don't think that this is going to be the one single thing that's going to bring gaming onto the web, but it is a very powerful tool for web game programming, bringing us closer to that native performance that, you know, us gamers really demand in our next-gen experiences or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so go ahead and leave your own thoughts and insights in the comments, I'd love to hear them, or just let me know what you thought of the video, drop a comment, like it, whatever. Thanks so much for watching, if you want to know more about how everything worked, be sure to check out the companion video released with this one where I go over the code and show you how I set things up. Thanks for watching!